I'm Alex and this is Justin and we've taken time out of our working lives in Sydney to travel to some of Australia's most remote and beautiful places in our modified four-wheel drive and we're filming our adventure along the way. Hello, welcome back to our Big Lap Essentials series. Last week Justin did a video on our best free camps of WA and obviously we didn't just stay in free camps. That's unfortunately pretty impossible so this week I'm just going to talk through our best national park campsites and station stays in WA that we stayed at over our four months exploring there if you missed last week's video we'll put a link above to see our top five free camps um, I'm going to use a similar format where I consider access to the campsite if there is any Telstra reception um, what the facilities are or were and if there was anything to do or any bonus features which made it an epic campsite. We're currently now in the NT, we've, we've just crossed the border and I'm at a beautiful free camp but we are next to a running stream so I apologise for the background noise and I shall crack on. So number five, our fifth favourite um, spot in WA was the Francis Perron or Francois Perron National Park. Now we stayed at two of the campgrounds there and there are quite a few um, I should say that the national park prices in WA were a bit of a shock when we first went there having come from South Australia and Tasmania the, the prices were a lot more expensive um, but there were some cool things to do so Francois Perro National Park is a four-wheel drive only national park and that's because of um, it's pretty sandy so you do need a four-wheel drive to get to all of the campsites in there um, there was no Telstra reception, although we did get a couple of bars up one of the hills in Big Lagoon, but just assume that you're not going to get any reception whilst you're there. All the campgrounds have got nice or, or good long drop toilets. Um, all, all the toilets in the WA National Park seem to be pretty good in comparison to some of the others. So good drop toilets, but nothing else. So no water, no showers, etc. Um, so make sure you take everything that you need. But the bonus for us is it's just a, a pretty cool national park. It's where the outback meets the ocean. You're on the marine park, so there's some awesome wildlife, some cool snorkeling. Um, and also this, it's got a, a homestead near the entrance of the park, which has um, a, a hot artesian spa. It's got the old um, sheep sh shearing shed that you can walk around. So plenty to do in the park itself and it's at the cheaper end of the national parks of $11 a person, not $15 an adult. So that was our number five. Number four is also a national park and it's the Offspray Campground in Cape Range National Park. So um, two wheel drive access, although it is unsealed getting into the campground itself. Absolutely no Telstra reception. Again, it's just got drop toilets um, and bins, but nice drop toilets. But the obvious bonus to, the, to any campsite on the Cape Range National Park is that you're on the Ningaloo Reef. Um, so you can literally just go snorkeling from the campsite, um, beautiful beach, beautiful sunsets, um, and just an uh, overall awesome place. So we definitely recommend Cape Range National Park and also the Osprey campsite. Number three is um, one of our first station stays. So. Wumeral Retreat. This is in between Shark Bay and Carnarvon. It is two-wheel drive access although it can get pretty muddy if it rains so just bear that in mind if you are in a two-wheel drive. It does have Telstra reception although it was pretty patchy when we were there. I don't think we could stream things. Um, it does have a basic shower and toilets. Um, they are kind of your authentic station stay style of toilets and showers but perfectly usable but what made this stand out to some of the other stations was the artesian spa so they've got three hot spa baths and they've beautifully done the decking and some chairs and fire pits etc there and they also had a really cool outback tip which was fun to walk around and explore so definitely a big tick on the bonus items there and we'd recommend a stay if you're passing through Number two on our top five was Quabbas Station, so sticking to the station themes. This one was just outside of Carnarvon. Um, there are a couple more, but this one 
you didn't have to be self-contained and we're not which was great um we stayed in the station itself um so i think they say it's four-wheel drive only but i think you could get to the station in a two-wheel drive but if you're going to explore the rest of it you would need to have a four-wheel drive to get um full enjoyment out of that it does have telstra like again it was patchy than we were expecting i don't think we could stream much whilst we were there Again, it does have um, camp kitchen, hot showers, toilets, laundry, but pretty basic um, setup, but it does have everything that your caravan park might have and you can have powered sites there. We went for unpowered, but the bonus for us was just exploring. So they gave us a map of their whole coastline and suggested where to go. You are on the Ningaloo coast. There were a few places you could go snorkeling. There were some cool blowholes cliffs rock pools and yeah just an awesome place to go and explore which is why it made it into number two on our list and our top national park or station stay campground was actually a bit unexpected but it was the Yanchep national park literally just outside of perth we stayed there when we had to go back into perth to get a few things done and it completely completely blew us away compared to other national park campgrounds so it's Two wheel drive access, had good Telstra service given in its location, but facility wise, it had toilets, a flushing toilets, hot showers that were extremely clean, camp kitchen, um, a fire pit area, and for bonuses, the National Park itself has a pub and a restaurant overlooking the lake, which was in walking distance. It had a koala rescue center, which you could walk around, and they told you about the koalas and plenty of other walks and it being so close to Perth the price of $15 a head with what you got made it uh, extremely worthwhile. So that was our top five national parks and station stays in WA. We hope you found that useful and if you have any comments or questions please leave them below and as usual like and subscribe. Thank you.